over fear with all you beautiful people. <laughs> Special on this, the 10th anniversary of this annual gathering of hope and defiance. But as we think back to 2014 and what we saw in this square, all the hope, will, determination, and we think of the stark contrast that we see on our plate today. And if we look back at the 10 years, we think, well, what have we achieved? We've achieved 10 years of missed opportunity, 10 years of wasted mandates, and above all, from the folk that we've elected to represent us, 10 years of cowardice. <laughs> Even without a whimper of all the lies that we were promised in the run-up to the referendum, Nothing we said so far, we still do nothing. But not to worry folks, because one of the key architects of all their lives now holds a senior position in our party of independence. And all right. <clears throat> I'm afraid for me today, folks, it's less hope for me, but more about anger. Anger about our country being dragged out of the EU against their will. Angry about the 20 billion stolen from our taxpayers' money at a time of national emergency. Angry about the ridiculous policies I've set just to divide us in here in Scotland. And more importantly, anger about our Grangemouth refinery being shut down, which is a catastrophe for Scotland. They're pissing in our porridge, folks, and they'll continue to do so because they do not fear us. They don't. They've not feared us since 2014 when we had a chance to take that power away and transform our country for the better. They do not care. <laughs> if we think about the day on here in 2014 as a celebration for the rise of our cause, then I must say that we could argue that today could be the memorial for our cause. <laughs> because although the dream will never die, if you believe that the route to our self-determination comes in the path of political movement, then I would suggest to you that over the next year that path is a big danger of being closed. With this Labour Party, ultra-unionist Labour Party here in Scotland, many who regularly exchange their red reserve for an orange sash, their plan for pacification of Scotland is already well underway. No more so than that symbol of colonialisation in the Scottish office that towers over our elected parliament in Holyrood. Its only tension is to bypass and subdue our powers here in Scotland going forward. To the extent that Mr Salmond, he himself renamed the Scottish Executive to the Scottish Government. Well, I would suggest that Mr Swinney may want to rename the Scottish Government to the Big Council Office, because that's all it is these days. I appreciate that we've got a Scottish election looming. <laughs> and with uh, our political wing of our movement still on its way back from the night march for Nail, we've got some real choices to consider in this dilemma. Ideally, we would be wanting to chalk up Parliament full of pro-independence, independent candidates, ALBA and ISP from top to bottom. The problem, though, with that, folks, is it requires all of us to work together, pull the same direction, and I'm afraid that's not been a strong point in recent times. <laughs> I would argue that we've all believed that the SNP were formerly that vehicle towards our political party independence. The problem with that vehicle is the drivers there have took key parts out of the engine and are trying to drive the vehicle off a cliff. <laughs> Most of you don't realise that the SNP is less than a third of our overall Yes movement. So I would suggest today that even if half that number go back and sign up for the SNP and we take over the branches and we flood the party and flush them out, flood the party and flush them out, our time is soft, folks. We've got some action to do, and time is against us. Should this election come either this year or in 2026? <clears throat> or we do nothing. The choice is yours, folks. Only yours. But what I would say is when you're making that choice, you can be the choice to be one of the stones of the foundations of a better Scotland and a better future and a better tomorrow. Or 
choose to join all the great stones that mark across this land for generations before who tried and failed. I'll say one last thought for you folks and I please take this on and take it home with you. Social media is not activism. Social media is not activism. Get together, get out in the streets and get back fighting against this law. We need to get rid of ASAP. Thanks for your time, folks. Look after each other. Free Palestine, free Scotland. Brothers and sisters, Paul McCartney, East Cambridge, yes. Thank you very much, Paul.